Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Sorry, I didn't stream on Tuesday. I was not feeling well, and today I'm feeling a little eh, but I really wanted to um, get playing to case three. So let's go. I really want to finish this game as soon as possible because I just want to find out what the real story is. If Kazuma's really dead, I still refuse to believe that he's dead. Runaway room. Glancing over my records of the late last century, I am faced by the events of a certain bitter winter. A murder in a carriage as it sped through dense London fog in the dead of the night. Though the victim and the perpetrator were the only ones inside, there were multiple witnesses to the crime itself. Oh my gosh, am I gonna be the murder suspect again? However, none could have imagined at the time that such a seemingly obvious case as this would end in such horrendous manner. Why? My friend, Mr. Herlock Scholes, once said of the incident, is... Watson's still alive? I believe that perhaps that case was indeed the prelude. The beginning of a long concerto that impressive Japanese student and I were to play together. Okay, so Sherlock is still with me. Platform 9 and 3 quarters! That's they look so good. Sorry, I'm too busy listening to their voices to read the English subtitles. If only we could have heard Kazuma's voice more. Brian's Coco. The kid's gonna steal it. He's gonna steal your bag. Or not. I thought he was going to steal it. I'm, I'm so distrusting. That feels like it would be super, um, whatchamacallit, claustrophobic. Closing in those wooden boards over your legs. What if you have to get out? That's scary. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks to you! Thanks for joining! Posture check, virtual hugs, thank you! I live, I feel better. 18th February, ah, oh, they passed my birthday, how dare you. British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. What an incredible place. It's so imposing, it's, it's almost suffocating. This place is breathtaking, it looks like a fortress. Are they inside Big Ben? That's crazy. There are some stone buildings like this in Japan now, of course, but they've only been built in a few short decades since we opened our borders to the outside world. An authentic example like this has quite a different impact, wouldn't you agree? A far cry from the wood and paper most of our buildings are constructed from. It's certainly unfamiliar. But I think there's more to the differences than just construction materials. Yeah, like being inside a giant clock. What is this place again? This is the Lord Chief Justice's office, Naruhoro-san, in the Supreme Court of Great Britain. The Lord Chief Justice. We had instructions to report here at this time, if circumstances were different. We were supposed to let the Lord Chief Justice know that we had arrived from Japan. But Kazuma can't. No. So instead, we are here in a different capacity. As envoys to report the news of Kazuma-sama's death. Yes. And having delivered his or her message, an envoy's duty is done. So, we'd have to return to Japan. If we want to remain here in Great Britain... I had to take Kazuma's place as the law student selected for the study tour. Yes, which means you need the requisite qualifications as a lawyer. Which is what I've been studying for. 
Here in Great Britain, it is the Lord Chief Justice who appoints lawyers. So that's the second reason why we're here, to have you officially recognized as a lawyer. It's the only way we'll be able to remain here in London. I hope I'm up to scratch. Ah, good morning. Sorry for keeping you. I forgot. British accents. Whoa. Oh. I trust you aren't too exhausted after your long voyage from Japan. Hmm. It seems I'm one hour, 12 minutes and 47 seconds late. My apologies. Oh, no, no. Don't mention it. We're never happier than when we're standing around with nothing but to do. You know skip why. Hey Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Objection, you're in contempt of toast. Ha ha ha. The MGP event is over in 14. Yeah, I know, I missed it. That's a bad guy. I know one when I see one. He definitely seems intimidating. How fortunate. So it Strongheart, okay. Male strongheart? Like, you're a dude with a strong heart? Wow. So, introductions. I am Male Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of the British Empire. Ugh, and I feel like a little mouse under an elephant's foot. Come on, Mr. Naruhoto, don't be a mouse. Oh, um... It's, it's an honor to meet you, Lord Chief Justice Strongheart. I'm Yudosuke Naruhoto from the Empire of Japan. Well, Mr. Naruhoto... Welcome to London, the capital of our glorious British Empire. Ah, yes, thank you. How's your week been? Um, I was sick for the first half. I'm feeling uh, a little better now. Uh, I was just really excited to um, get back into playing Great Ace Attorney. But how's your week been? Converse with London. So, what are your impressions of our capital so far? How do you like London? Oh, um, well, um, help! I've been so nervous ever since I got here that I can't remember a single thing about the city. It's simply splendid, isn't it, Mr. Naruhoto? Oh? We had a wonderful view of some London streets from the carriage on the way here from the station. Everything is so impressive and grand. I must say I almost lost for words. Nothing special to report, but it's Friday the 13th tomorrow. <gasps> it is. Oh my gosh. Dun 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 dun. I'm glad to hear you like it. The city boasts tramways, paid piped water and gas, even cables supplying electricity. We used to be heard every revolutionary new technology in the world. Every visitor to London is astounded. Oh, yes, astounded is the word. Thanks for saving me there, Susato-san. And everyone seems so jolly and full of vigor. Yes, there is much excitement about the upcoming great exhibition we will be hosting here in London. Great exhibition? Oh, so it's during Queen Victoria's reign. Cultural and technological achievements from around the globe are to be exhibited here in our great city. Wait, if it's the Great Exhibition, then I don't think Big Ben was built yet. So, this is all wrong. It'll be the greatest spectacle of its kind in history, and we will make Paris's World Fair look like a toy shop. My English accent is all over the place. Gosh, I can hardly imagine how magnificent it's going to be. Great Britain's capital city is nothing but the ma blah, but magnificent. London is the center of the modern world. Even if you do say so yourself. The sun will never set on our great empire. But now it is. Because you lost all your territories. Perhaps it is fate that in these progressive times we welcome visitors from the land of the rising sun. Movie marathon tomorrow? Oh, all the Friday the 13th movies? English muffins, long lost cousin, English toast. Ha 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 ha. Law students. Um, Lord Chief Justice? I think you were expecting a student of law for the study tour, weren't you? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Kazuma Asogi, if my memory serves. That's right. The British government has already been telegraphed a full report on the situation. I understand the young man lost his life aboard the steamship bound for our shores. That's amazing. The news reached him before we even arrived. My country naturally extends its deepest condolences to yours. Oh, thank you. And you honored this appointment specifically to inform me of the news? Yes. We are here in the capacity of envoys from Japan to report the sad news in person. They tell me you Japanese are a people of protocol and courtesy, and I see that it's true. And it is with some regret that I must inform you. That the 
death of the young lawyer means the study tour arrangement can no longer proceed. If you would just hear us out, Lord Strongheart. English toast as opposed to French toast. Ah, uh, I don't like French toast. It's kind of gross. <laughs> what do you have to say, madam? It's about the study tour. Mr. Naruhodo here would like to make a proposal. Would he now? Well, Mr. Naruhodo? This is it then, the moment of truth. Would you be continuing the study tour? The thing is, Lord Justice, um, Lord Strongheart, I was wondering if perhaps you would consider allowing the study tour to go ahead. Don't misunderstand me. Britain would ideally like to see the tour go ahead. But without a lawyer from your country, there's nothing to be done. Well, in that case, what if there was someone else? Another lawyer from Japan, I mean. Is there something I don't know? Um, only a single lawyer was invited to Great Britain from your country. And that was Mr. Asogi. At least that is what I've been led to understand. Well, um, the thing is, this really isn't going well at all. I just can't seem to find the right words to say to this man. Mr. Naruhodo. I don't like how sometimes they go like Mr. Naruhodo and then sometimes Naruhodo-san. It's like, when do you make the difference? Is it when English people are around that you say Mr. whatever? I don't know. French toast is breakfast royalty. I don't like it. I like eggs. I like toast. I don't like it together. It just feels weird. I could ruin things here if I'm not careful. What am I going to say? If there is someone else here from Japan who could be described as a lawyer, it's... Me. It's me. I can do it. Is that so? I mean, I don't actually have any qualifications as such, but... No qualifications, you say, and yet you still claim to be a lawyer. I... I have acted as a lawyer in court before. Only once, as it happens. And I had Kasuma to help me, and I was the accused, but glossing over the details. I've been spending every spare moment on the journey here to Great Britain studying. I've learned all about British law and court proceedings while I was on board the SS Burya. The voyage from Japan is some 50 days, I believe. Not what you might call a full education. To become a qualified lawyer here in Britain... Whoa! So, thank you so much for the sub! 15 months! Woo! Also, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! I'm actually kind of the same. I like ham, I love cheese, but I don't like ham and cheese sandwiches. Yeah, some things, like... I like scrambled eggs, and I like, um... Like, um steamed eggs, but I don't like fried eggs. <laughs> and I don't like egg rolls. But most other ways that egg is like prepared, I will eat it. I don't know why. I think it's maybe the texture that like wears me out. You are great, Selk. Uh, did I read this? I don't think so. Not only do you need a university degree in law, you must also complete several years of training. I realize it's far too short a period of time. But I can't just go back to Japan. Kazuma, Mr. Asuki's journey had only be just begun. Coming here on the story t study tour was all he thought about. I had to carry on and do everything he planned to do. I know it must sound like I have an overly inflated opinion of myself, but I would do anything to prove that I have what it takes. Any test you care to set me. Just one chance, that's all I'm asking for. Please. Hmm, 31 seconds. Sorry? Your opening statement there, Mr. Naruhodo, it was 31 seconds long. Not too brief, not too protracted. A perfectly judged appeal, I would say. Which is a skill that would uh, stand you in good stead as a lawyer. Oh, thanks. So, you're willing to put those words to trial, are you? Well, I'm all for the entertainment. Huh? But let me ask you one thing first, sir. Yes. <laughs> You say you intend to do everything Mr. Asuki planned to do. Are you firmly set on that path? Well, yes, that's my intention. I see. Am I imagining things? Or did his expression just alter a fraction there all of a sudden? I didn't see anything. He's totally a bad guy. Yeah, the music, the eyebrows, the mut like the mutton chops. He's a bad guy. <laughs> Very well. You have your wish. I'll give you a chance. A test to become a specially certified lawyer. Whether you pass or fail is entirely down to you. Really? 
Test! Oh, I'm gonna save just in case. I don't wanna fail. Okay, test time. So, what form will the test take exactly? Tell me, Mr. Nadahudo, what do you consider the role of a lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So, let's have you defend someone. Huh? Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an apt trial about to begin later today. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as yet, so this will become welcome news. Today? Straight away? If you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty, you'll have passed my test. What could be simpler? Ugh, how do I get myself into these situations? Well, could I ask, what sort of trial is it, Lord Strongheart? Hmm, yes, good question. Ah, I remember. It's a murder trial. Aren't they all? Uh, so what you're saying is, we're going to clean his clocks. <laughs> Good! How do you think of these awesome puns? Also, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. That was awesome. That was great. A murder? An extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case. If the defendant is found guilty, he will of course be sentenced to capital punishment. Capital punishment? He'll- can we put to death? Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows without exception. Presumably you read that much in your short sea-based introduction to British law. We, we can't possibly agree to such a test. We would be toying with a man's life. I am the Lord Chief Justice, and I've decided it's acceptable. But you can't do that, can you? There's no need to overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. So the defendant may live or die depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, he'll be hanged. Mr. Nanohuru, you've come to be claiming to be a lawyer. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to do a lawyer's job. And you say you intend to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would like to understand just how far you're willing to go in order to make that happen. He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You fall in silence. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial begins shortly. I get an answer from you now. What's it to be? What do I say? Do I agree to this as a test? Of course I do! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! Hey dear, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! Can't we just get one funny case like a robbery of Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> what? What? Ooh, how would, how would that happen? Oh wait, did I miss dialogue? All right then, if I have to give a decision now, my answer is, is... I can't do it, I can't get the words out. Jelly, are you gonna try out the demo for Tales of Rise coming out on the 18th or are you gonna wait for the full game? I'm definitely gonna try out the demo, but um, I was thinking I really wanted to get Tales of Arise for PS5, but I don't wanna get a PS5 until there's a pro or slim version. So I don't know how many years that's gonna take. So me actually getting around to Tales of Arise might be a couple of years. I probably won't play it on release. Sad. 15 seconds. Hmm. Your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That was too slow. So, it's as I suspected, is it? Sorry? You have noble intentions but lack the resolve to see them through. Oh, did I miss a timing prompt? Ooh. Did I miss a timing prompt? The test is cancelled. Thank you for stopping by. Go and acquire your ticket for passage back to the east tomorrow. This conversation is over. Yes, Lord Strongheart. Thank you for offering me a chance. Mr. Naruhodo. I'm sorry, Mr. Sato, but what could I do? It's alright. I understand. You do? It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. The resolve has absolutely nothing to do with it. What are you trying to say, madam? I think what Ms. Susato means is that no matter how badly I like to be recognized as a lawyer here and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his one and only chance at a trial so trivially would be utterly unforgivable, and I feel exactly the same way. Ooh, okay. 
Hugs, thank you! I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test, as some kind of experiment. A lawyer may fight for his clients in court day after day. But for each one of those clients, the particular day they stand in the dock may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do that job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Oh, okay, so I answered wrong. Wait, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, was there something else? It's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the old Bailey from here. If you leave immediately, you should be still be there in time. But, but I just said that... I was quite serious in what I told you. The defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him. What? At this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. And if that happens, there's only one possible outcome. He will receive the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to be like this? What, is my, is my client like Jack the Ripper or something? Please don't expect an answer to every question. The cold, hard truth of the matter is that there is only one person now with a chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. I'm, I'm really his only hope? The DLC costumes in Arise look kinda eh compared to previous tales. I could be wrong, but I think Arise getting an Evangelion DLC- Can we stop with Evangelion? It's not even that good. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Evangelion isn't good. Uh, Tales of Arise DLC costumes. I gotta take a look at this. Closer look at DLC costumes. Um... Okay, that blue outfit looks cool. Uh, that does not. That, eh, that, uh, eh. You're right, they don't look that cool. And I have no idea who all these characters are because I didn't want to look up any info because I don't want any more spoilers. Oh, those colors are weird. School life, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I like, Oh. Uh. Man, I love school uniforms, but a lot of these are just no. Okay, beach time. I see abs. I see chest. I approve the beach. <laughs> the yes, the swimmer outfits. Yes, I approve. <laughs> The girl with the shield bikini costume looks wow. I know. I saw. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Oh man. Definitely gotta get those um, outfits. The color of the school costume are awful. Yeah, the color and the combination of like um, patterns. It's just why. Why. Ugh. I don't like. I don't like. Yeah, a lot of these is the the coloring that's weird sad. What do you say now, madam? Me? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? You said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances, and I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. Oh. Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave in two minutes and sixteen seconds. So, venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. He's gone. Hmm. The old Bailey. If we're going to do this, Mr. Naruhodo, we must leave at once. Uh, can I go? Heck yeah, we're going. The color of the school costume are awful. Yeah, it is. I was like, school! Yay! Oh, no. <laughs> 18th February, 9.45 a.m. Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Oh no, now for everyone I'm gonna have to do British accents. Ah, it's already terrible. Oh, thank goodness we're in time. There's still 15 minutes until trial begins. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. I thought my teeth were going to rattle loose. Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? 
Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver, and there's a guinea in it for you. A whole guinea, damn. It's one of my favorite lines from the Herlock Sholmes stories, and it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're so pleased. I thought we were going to die, and we had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before trial started. Yes, I suppose there's that. Anyway, I don't understand it. The court clerk said the defendant should be here. But there's no sign of him at all. Did you already platinum replicant? No, I've um been uh, farming materials. Uh, I got really lucky with black pearls because sometimes like I would get a spawn of two and a spawn of... um. Yeah, I would get mostly spawns of two. So black pearl didn't take me that long to get. It's just... Ugh, broken wristwatches. I'm working on that now and it's just... Not happening. British toast. <laughs> So this is the old bailey. Even this room for defendants to wait in is grand. Wait, wait, what? Even this room for defendants to wait in is grand. I can read. Are you all right, Mr. Narahodo? I'm feeling tense, that's all. This place gives you the same sense of foreboding that I remember from the Supreme Court in Japan. And an oppressive air, almost as if the building itself is going to crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It feels like only yesterday that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you're to defend is, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. Top of the moon to you, madam! Sir! It's you? Oh my gosh, because it's Irish, I was just like, Jack sucked by Jack sucked by voice, and I'm just like, no, that's bad! I can't do Irish, though. What are you doing following me here? Things are fair, desperate, are they? Sorry? Would you look at those expressionless faces from the East, are yous? Mm, I think Folklore Necklace was the worst draw for me, both PS3 and PS4. I hate the materials. Oh, yeah, the um, the those necklaces are going to be the worst to get because I hate the airborne enemies, and there's barely any of them, so it's going to suck. Um, We're from Japan, yes? Ah, Japan is it. Right, say no more. So, how much do yous need? No, no, we're just here because... No need to explain, fella. I've been there myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name, and all the while in a strange faraway land. Well, actually... <sighs> we haven't found a place to stay yet, no. <laughs> tis grand, tis grand. Let me start by giving you a thousand guineas. Say nothing now. Huh? A thousand guineas? Please, Mr. Sato, you don't have to shout. But a thousand guineas is... is enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? There's nothing to me at all. I like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a rainy day, you see? I have enough wealth to buy the city of London or two, three, or times over. I can read. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Well, even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Good. Ah! That hit me in the eye. Say oi, governor, in a Brit. Oi, governor! <laughs> I can't do it. Ah, the flying shade in the desert drops them and takes so long to get to them. I know. That's why I'm not looking forward to it. Don't get me wrong, fella. I'm not giving it to you. No strings attached. I'll be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, tis a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin, you see, is for me good self here. I'll be in a dock. So now, what I want you to do. Just come along with me and stand there beside me. Officially, you'd be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Oh, well, the thing is... Don't worry about a thing. All you have to do is stand up there next to me. Nothing more. Otherwise, you see... The trial is going to start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. The Lord Chief Justice wasn't just making it all up. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask, but... Does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Blaster and blazes, do you Do you not know who I am? Me? One of London's biggest names? No, sorry. We only just arrived in the city, you see. Hmm, I see. I suppose it isn't altogether impossible. Well, just next to Hyde Park there in the center of London is another beautiful park. Sorry? A park? What? It is called the Gilded Park. Full of blossom of flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. I donated to the city, so I did. 
an, an entire park in central London? A city of smiles. That's my vision for London. Are you supposed to be Willy Wonka or something? McGilded? There's nothing Magnus McGilded wouldn't do for the city, and it's queer, it's queer old people. What the heck is queer? Magnus McGilded? Are you trying to compensate for something or what? That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Wait, okay, what is this? The deal with this dude? People. Okay, male strongheart is 52. Magnus McGilded is 48. The defendant in this case, he's an incredibly wealthy philanthropist with a wonderful reputation in London. I'm to defend him as a test of worthiness to become a lawyer. If he's that wealthy and, you know, philanthropic, why is no one rushing to defend him? Hmm. Ah, but now they've the gall say I'm a good for nothing criminal. Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with the London police, I ask ya? Ah, ah, ah. All right, don't pass out. Mr. Naruhodo. Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. <sighs> um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is, we're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a study tour from Japan, you see. <sighs> so, if you don't have a lawyer for the trial yet, and you'd be happy to put yourself- in What was that? What was after I say you that digit? I gave you a thousand guineas to stand up there next to me, haven't I? Well, yes, but I wasn't really offering just to stand up there next to you. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. Sorry? I know what you're thinking. This chance of a fellow claims to have more money than the Queen. But if that's true, why the Blazes can't he hire the finest lawyer in all of England? Because he did it! That's the only explanation! Well? Um, well... I mean, I'm wondering why he doesn't have representation, but doesn't mean he did it. Not at all. Although, it is a little strange, to be honest. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. That would be the fault of the Reaper. Sorry? Did he just say Reaper? I, the Grim Reaper of the Bailey, Lord Barak von Van Zeeks? He's the prosecutor? Barak von Zeeks? Barak von Zeeks. I can't find a pun there. I'm gonna call him Barak von Zeeks. Hmm. Prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Van Zeeks stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And to this day, in every single trial which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. What? Until now. So it's reached a desperate situation where there's no one willing to stand in defense against this fella at all. You could say he's the living legend of the old Bailey. They say that every game. I know, and then I'll show up and be like, haha! I have bested you. Goodness, Lord Barak? Barak? Barak. Von Zeeks. Whatever. He must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor, then. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madam. It's cursed. Cursed? What on earth? The defendant is summoned at his and his counsel. Please make your way into the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel? That would be me. Oh, tis time. Well then, fella, don't let me down. But... But I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Until- oh, 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 Until you showed your face here. I had made up my mind, so I had. Sorry? I decided I'd have to defend myself in there. How would that have worked? But then you made an appearance. A student of law, wouldn't you know? Tis no accident I can assure you that. Tis fate. So don't get cold feet now, please. But what did you do? I literally know nothing about the case or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I can't just turn my back on him. Mr. Naruhodo, the man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom, armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes, something that Kazuma would never have allowed to happen. Counsel for the defense, what are you doing? If you're late for the start of trial, you'll lose your right to stand. 
I'll be right there. It's happening then. My first trial in the British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. Is that end of episode one or? Nope, we just go in. Yo, are we in Chrono Trigger? <gasps> oh, okay, okay. There's a jury thing. I was wondering when this would show up, because this showed up in a Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. Like, I'll have to interview each person and they'll be like, whoa, whoops, and I'll have to interrogate a person... stuff. Centuries of history in this place is palpable, isn't it? It's so different to the Supreme Court in Japan. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes, what? <laughs> your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I just can't help it. But <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Sandy Claus. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Let's see, his name is Van Zeke, so I'm guessing he must be like Austrian or German. But I don't know how well I could do a German accent. Sandy Claus, Sandy Toast. The prosecution, the prosecute, I, I don't know how to do a German accent, is fully prepared. I'll just make him sound like Count Chocula. It'll be like, it'll be rude and bad, but that's all I can think of. That must be the Reaper of the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. Those eyes please me. Nipponese. What the heck? <laughs> they shroud your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. Oh, 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 oh. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, a cold shiver just ran down my spine all the way to the tips of my toes. Now, Mr. McGilded. Yes, my lord. You stand accused of murder, a capital offense. You should be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this foreigner? As I've always said, my lord, tis a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fellow is a student from some little island off in the far east. Is it not the British way to ignore the dangers to yourself and give those less fortunate a fair chance? I'd like to think that acts of chivalry do the great British Empire proud. Listen to Mr. McGilded. What a fine gentleman in London. Did you hear that he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? My lord, please bear me go and play in McGilded Park. It seems as though everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcome news, and he certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Van would be Dutch. Oh, shoot. I don't know Dutch accent either, so I'm gonna stick with the count, and I'm so sorry if it offends anyone, but that's all I can think of. I'm not great with accents. I look they put, Mr. McGilded, and most laudable sentiments. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly to remind you that you six members of the public have been selected for your impartiality. Are you ready to proceed? Oh my gosh, voices for all of them. Yes, my lord, if the task is to send boys to gallows where they belong, I'm more than ready. At the manor, his lordship always says we should dispose of rubbish promptly. Naturally, I agree. <laughs> Any criminals here will soon be wishing they never set eyes on me. Well, he's clearly drunk, so I can't trust his testimony. I feel the chill. Oh, 
I don't mind me and my dears, I'll just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts for my grandson. Ah, Mr. Naruhoro, those people are... The jury, yes. That's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right, I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge patches sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it will become clear as the trial progresses. Yes! Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! Not that she toast enough. <laughs> Prosecutor Van Zeeks. My lord. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm butchering all these accents. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you'd renounced your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. Oh, oh, oh. I'm trying to do like an old grandpa voice for this guy, but it's not working, so whatever. So, what brings you back? Is there some change of circumstance of which the court should be aware? I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So the Reaper has been out of action for five years. Why did he choose today of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Nadahoro. As you wish, sir. The court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statement, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly, my lord. Oh, oh, oh. As your lordship is aware, there is a, this is a case of overwhelming simplicity. We must be the only ones in here who aren't aware. The incident took place in the late evening, three days past. The hour was some minutes after ten. The victim was maker of building bricks known in the community as Thrice Fired Mason. Sorry? Thrice? He was a very accomplished craftsman. The bricks he fired were said to be almost indestructible. The victim's corpse was devo- Oh, that's fancy Oops. The victim's corpse was discovered in an omnibus in service on streets of London at the time. A dagger that had been thrust into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. Here is the autopsy report for an investigating medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. I shall accept that and the photograph as evidence. The autopsy report. Uh, cause of death as internal hemorrhaging as a result of single stab wound to the abdomen. The photograph. Knife in his abdomen is clearly visible, but his face is partly obscured from view by an old crooked hat. And one further item of evidence. I want to take a closer look right now. Um, examine. <coughs> 54. <coughs> time and cause of death. 50 to February. <coughs> 10 to 11. 7 to <coughs> Omnibus. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing. I choked on my spit. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay. His eye seems to be closed. Okay. Uh, nothing too shady here, right? Okay. The prosecution wishes to submit these as well. And these are... Good lord! Is that blood, counsel? Yes, my lord. Seized by a policeman who arrived at the scene. These gore-soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. What? Mr. McKilton's gloves had blood on them? He could have been trying to stop the blood. You know? What did you do? I didn't do anything. This time it's someone else who's accused of stabbing and killing someone else. I'm innocent. Yes, I will accept these as evidence as well. The defendant's leather gloves. There's a blood stain on the right glove. Okay. How did I get into this? Backed into a corner before I even started. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus, there were only two passengers traveling inside his vehicle at the time. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. One, two passengers. Only two? Obviously, one of those passengers was a deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other. 
We'll see you accused. Magnus be gilded. Hmm. Well, rather damning circumstances to say the least. Defendant, what say you? Well, of course I have no recollection of such a thing. Mr. McGilder? To be sure, I wrote the omnibus that evening. But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness and I always succumb to it. Are you claiming to have been asleep? Just a motion at the carriage, my lord. Little and sore this. And when I opened my eyes again... It was a desperate sight before me. The body of a man I've never laid eyes on before in my life. Hmm. Now I ask you, what good heart and soul would rush to help a fellow bleating from his stomach? I wasn't about to start wearing baton gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. So the blood got onto the gloves then, after the man had been killed. Unfortunately, that statement that the drivers is only the beginning. What? That's not all of it? There were multiple witnesses. To the precise moment at which the brickmaker was fatally stabbed. Nothing shady here except for shady toes. No! There's a lot of murder surrounding you. I keep my eye on you. <laughs> nice count voice. Yeah, I'm trying. Order! 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 When the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage. And there were witnesses to the crime. This is not just a case of compelling evidence. It's the nail in the coffin for the accused. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Thank you, counsel. The circumstances of the crime have been made quite clear. I think we will hear testimony from these witnesses first of all. Your wish is my command. Oh, oh, oh. Bailiff, bring the witnesses in at once. One, two... Oh, okay, so these are the witnesses. Then what did the jurors have to do with anything? Witnesses, your names and occupations. Beppo! <laughs> My name is... Well, everyone calls me Beppo. I... I drive an omnibus in the East End. Bruce Fairplay, I'm a banker in the city. My name's First, Lady First. Haha, <laughs> ladies first. I um, make hats for the gents. I am going to forget all of these voices and accents and it's just going to be a nightmare. Let's begin by confirming the facts. Three days ago, three, one, two, three, at a short time at ten o'clock in the evening, all of you present in the stand were in an omnibus and witness to the aforementioned incident. Is that correct? You're not voice acting all of them individually. <laughs> Yes, sir. See, I already forgot his voice. Quite right. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Very well, then. Let's proceed to your formal testimonies, please. Each of you will tell the court precisely what you saw. I'm even, like, getting the judge's voice all mixed up and whatnot. What the witnesses saw. It, it was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers. I remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. The now blue, the accused just reached over and plunged the knife right into his guts. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did. Couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus. And, and then I saw it too. How? Hmm, unambiguous testimony, I must say. Exactly, my lord. These men witnessed the incident in the omnibus with their own eyes. But you guys weren't inside, so how did you see clearly? Um, I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Yes, counsel? Well, this testimony... Makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why not? Well, the incident took place inside a moving carriage, didn't it? As has been clearly stated from the outset, yes. Well, in that case, how could those two witnesses possibly have seen what happens? There's no way they could have seen inside of the moving carriage. Didn't you know the carriage was stopped? Oh, quit. I dread that civilization in Eastern Island nations was a good century behind our own. 
But you're here in London yourself. Are you really so ignorant about our omnibuses? Huh? Tell me, my Nipponese friend, have you ever been traveled inside an omnibus? Well, no. We, um, only arrived in London this morning. No matter. I have arranged for all of us to see for ourselves. The actual scene of the crime, that is. What do you mean? The actual scene? How? A carriage is designed to be moved, after all. Presumably you understand that much? Um, yes. The only bus in which this bloody crime took place is here today, in this very building. Here? What? The, the entire carriage? Bailiff. Bring forth the stricken omnibus! Ah, ah, ah. Man, Alucard has not aged well. <laughs> London, Fifth Avenue, Jobmaster, Strand, uh, what omnibus? So that's an omnibus. The omnibus. Can't believe they could bring something so enormous in here. Great Britain's courtrooms are amazing. As you can see, the omnibus is pulled by two horses and can carry up to eight passengers. Oh, oh, oh. Four passengers seated in the enclosed cabin and another four on the rooftop deck above. Every Londoner knows that the best views of the city's architecture and sights are to be had from the top of an omnibus. And I should point out to our foreign guests. Okay, so there is a window. That there is a skylight in the roof, allowing a view of the interior from the seats above. Ah, a skylight. Oh! The penny drops at last, I see. These two gentlemen were occupying the rooftop seats on this omnibus when the murder took place. That is how they came to witness the grim incident. Through the skylight. Ugh, that makes perfect sense. Well, counsel, this is a first. In all my years behind the bench, I have never experienced a crime scene itself to be brought into the courtroom. There are a number of important clues remaining inside the carriage, my lord. I would like to submit the omnibus itself as evidence. That is the prosecution's wish. Oh, oh, oh. Then let me examine it too, please. Very well, I see no reason why not. This omnibus is hereby formally accepted as evidence. The omnibus has been entered. Okay. I can't believe it. The entire crime scene entered as evidence? Okay. Yes, Great Britain is simply extraordinary. Um, can I examine it? Mm. Well, let's open a door and go inside, shall we? Uh, the scene of a murder. It's horrible. Okay. Clearly blood. That's blood soaked into the seat. The victims, obviously. Yes, and that seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck. Would you really stab someone in full view of the other passengers like that, I wonder? Well, it was after dark. And there was a lamp on in here, so perhaps the culprit couldn't see anything outside through the skylight. Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't seem like it was a planned attack. But how did the blood drip onto the seats if... Uh, whatever. Ah, that's a poster for the great exhibition that's due to start six months from now. There's a lot of focus being drawn to the Crystal Tower, the centerpiece of the whole exposition. Ooh, the Crystal Tower. It's under construction already, I believe. People all over London must be fizzing with excitement at the prospect of a, such a grand event. Okay, uh, is this the sign or is this a lantern? Okay, it's a poster. Uh, okay, that's nothing of note. Uh, Eiffel Tower? Crystal Tower? Uh, okay, so this is also a Crystal Tower. Mm. There's a handle. The sea has a handle, it seems. Whoa! Someone could have totally hidden in there and killed him! This looks like all sorts of equipment that might be needed to keep the omnibus running. Feeding tubs, tools to repair wheels, blankets, horseshoeing tools. So it's a storage compartment for the coachman to keep his things, it seems. There doesn't seem to be any space for passengers to stow their luggage, that's for sure. Well, I don't imagine it would be very convenient for that purpose anyway. Okay, so there's that thing, but this side doesn't have a handle. Is there anything on the roof? It's quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yes, it's quite large enough to afford a good view into the cabin from the roof deck. And there doesn't appear to be a handle or catch of any description. So I suppose it can't be opened from the inside cabin, at least. Okay. 
Have you seen enough? Let's step back outside then. Yeah, I think I saw everything. Now let's examine the outside. So this is the roof deck for, of the Omnibus. Oh, you must have a wonderful, uh, wonderful view of London streets from up here. So people sit all the way up here on bitter winter nights with the cold air rushing past them? And they have to pay money to do so? Ugh, can't imagine how cold it must feel. That just made me think of something horrible. Can you imagine being dragged around the city in the freezing cold as a punishment? Perhaps that is the real price you pay to stay out late. Wait, I wanted to get like an angle of the- okay, fine. Is this also going to be the stupid view? Oh no. So this is- oh yeah it is. Then where does a driver sit? Cause he was like, yes I saw it a precise moment, but it's like... If the driver sits here, how did he see it? Cause he'd have to like, clamber to the back. These are the lamps... Um, nothing weird on this side. Is there anything- okay, so we can't examine the bottom so there's no nothing fishy down there. Okay. Is this also gonna be the thing or the- Okay, so this is Skyline. You can certainly see the inside carriage uh, through this opening, that's for sure. Yes, and that's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. So I'm sure the witnesses c uh, would have been able to see quite clearly. That's not good for us. Okay. I don't- <sighs> Phoenix Wright Omnibus! Oh my gosh! They're throwing um, Phoenix Wright in here. Baker Street, London Fifth Avenue, okay. Okay, that's nothing. Alright, think we've seen enough. I could help myself a lot by giving that omnibus thorough examination seeing as it's here. I just did! Any objections to this omnibus? No! No objections! Objection! Let us continue with the proceedings then. Your cross-examination, counsel. Hmm. Pray don't expect this Nipponese stray to understand the intricacies of British British court's cross-examination rights. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, my first cross-examination in a British court. Focus, Rinosuke. Focus! Whoa, they're swords! It was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers, I remember it well. Victim and a man, blah, 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 press. Mata. Mata! Just a random blast when he's dead serious. Ha ha ha! And you saw them through the skylight of the roof of the carriage? That's right, when you sit on the top deck, the window's right there at your feet. There was a lamp on the inside, so I had a pretty good view. That's not him. <laughs> the two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't see exactly make out the faces. But there was not a shred of doubt in my mind that it was McG Mr. McGilded. How can you be so sure? Well, how could I put it politely? Mr. Gilded is a gentleman of rather small stature. I could have mistaken him for anyone else. Let's not forget that when the vehicle came to a halt, the only people inside the enclosed cabin where did deceased Mr. Mason and Mr. McGilded? There is no room for doubt here. Ugh, oh, I really wish there was. Short person discrimination. Then I was blue. You actually saw the exact moment it happens? Didn't I already testify to that? I think. Fairplay is also a rich dude who wants McGilded out of the picture so that he could be the richest, most important dude around. Oh, fair dinkum. Uh, hard work and see backers not considered trustworthy these days. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. This is no good. I really got his backup. Perhaps you could just tell us what- My lord! Hmm? Juror number three? What's the meaning of this? My mind's made up, my lord. Completely and utterly made up. Made up about what? I don't like the stinking rich. Never have. They're always up in something or other that they shouldn't be. Every one of them. And that little leprechaun of a man is no exception. Well, he can't. He can't fool me. 
What is this? There's no point wasting time listening to any more of this. That's my opinion on the matter anyway. That's precisely what I was about to say. Wait, how can you be doing this already? As a foreman of the jury, it's my duty to set a good example to my fellow jurors. How does it automatically go there? What? What is this? What is happening here? Let me see. Ah, oh, yes. It seems that's how the members of the jury give their verdicts. With fire? Apparently, yes. White for innocent and black for guilty. As the six members of, of the jury make up their minds about the case, one by one, they each cast a ball of fire into the great scales of justice, as we saw a moment ago. So if those enormous scales fall completely to the black side, does that mean... Let's do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, now I'm even more worried than I was before. Very well, the court acknowledges the change in the jury's stunts. Counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. Ah, this is a nightmare. Okay, so I feel like those two were scripted. I did. I don't think I did anything wrong. That's right, I stabbed you in my free rear car helmet. He stabbed him, you say, and you were sitting up on the roof deck, were you? Yes, that's right, sir. I was up on the roof seats. I remember seeing the little jet sitting next to the fellow that was stabbed. I've been thinking about a new hat design, you see, so I was just gazing absentmindedly around. But then, then I happened to look down through the skylight. It, it, it was sticking right out from his belly, that huge great knife. Oh wait, I forgot to look around. Ah, frack. Hmm, a grim sight indeed. Ah, that didn't help me at all. The jury look like they're even more convinced that my client did it than they were before. That appears to have uh, made everyone even more dubious that Mr. McGilded uh, is telling the truth. If only we had some evidence to counter their suspicions. Mr. First! Oh, y yes, yes, sir? Is this the knife you saw? Oh, good grief! Yes, that's it! The very one, sir! Is that... Yes, Counsel. This is the blade that was driven into the victim's belly like a stake through the heart. That is a blade of considerable size, Counsel. It is, and furthermore, the scabbard is emblazoned prominently with a certain initial. The letter M, which seems oddly familiar. It's Moriarty. Moriarty did it. He just wants to play with Sherlock. Ugh, please, no. M, for Magnus, perhaps? Or McGilded, possibly? Take your pick. It seems this particular na big name in London made a magnificent mistake. <laughs> Alliteration. What? There are M's everywhere! Like, like, yes! Like a mason! This blade is far too extravagant for a poor brickmaker to have owned. It could have been a gift. No, this weapon of murder almost certainly belongs to the accused. Ugh. Hmm. Not conclusive, but certainly compelling, counsel. The murder weapon. Fancy ornament, blah 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 blah. No! Stop! Everyone shut up! I'm still cross examining them. Can't find anything out of sorry. Take it out, take it out! The part is a sheath, isn't it? Are you alright, Mr. Nanohono? Hmm? Oh, sorry, yes, I just don't really like blades. Oh, those all seem like the words of a man with a large katana slung from his waist. That's not a blade, that's Kazuma's soul. Oh, Kazuma! Anyway, there's no sense in delaying it. Let's see what the blade looks like. Blood! Ugh, that looks like a lot of blood. That looks a lot like blood. Surely is blood, the victim's. Ugh, an Englishman's blood looks like a like looks a lot like a Japanese man's blood. Did you think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just that we've only just arrived here in Great Britain. I'm finding it a little hard to adjust. Yes, I do understand. M. An ornate letter M, undeniably Mr. Magnus McGilded's initial. And it's beautifully gilded, too. It must be very valuable, I should think. Ah, what is it? Look at this M. 
If you turn it upside down, it becomes a W. This could change everything. A W? Yes, this is one of those, you know, turnabout cases. I'm sure of it. I'm afraid I don't know at all, but what I am sure is that it is an M. Oh, well, that idea was quickly quashed. Watch, it's gonna be a W and he's gonna be like, I told you so! Okay, I think that's all I can see because that is just gonna be blood again. Okay. My lord, if you'll forgive the interruption. Ah, uh, just Joe number two. Ah, uh, their voices are too similar. Go on. Mr. McGilded is a pillar of society and a gentleman, and a gentleman's word should be sacrosanct. However... Gosh darn it! Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Wait, what are you about to do? Dispose of the rubbish. No! I don't wish to cause offense, but I do like to eradicate all traces of filth and grime. Hold it! I have painstakingly typed every word uttered here today and cross-referenced all the facts. As such, I am now in a position to draw the only logical conclusion. Mother flippin' rhinoceros! Am I- is this script- am I scripted to lose? What the heck is going on? Not again. That's four out of six jury members who've proposed a guilty verdict. There are only two left. We've had it. Every time I press these witnesses for more information, I just make the situation worse. Nevertheless, what we need more than anything at the moment is more information. We're still very much in the dark. I suppose I'll just have to keep pressing the witnesses, knowing that more sparks may well fly. We mustn't give up hope that we'll uncover something that will give us a way to fight back. But... Alright, I'll keep trying. I can't give up. I just need to keep calm and listen to the witnesses' statements again. Okay, I haven't pressed this guy, so... As soon as I heard him scream, I struck my brush and shot too! Um, what exactly did you see? Oh, well, sure, that would be the p -p passenger, sir. He, he collapsed on the floor, he was. And by the passenger, obviously, you're referring to the victim, Mr. Mason, the brake maker. And then the other p passenger that had a knife in his hand, like this. But he he didn't have the knife in his hand. It was in the belly. He de he never pulled it out. By the other passenger, obviously, you're referring to the accused, Mr. Magnus McGilded. And, and then he p p plunged him down like this, stabbing the other passenger in the b b belly. Okay, nothing weird. What? But you, if he already screamed, order, order. You know, I'm just gonna give him a low voice. It is hard to believe one of London's greatest philanthropists, but this is damning indeed. The law knows no philanthropists, my lord, only the innocent and the guilty. Oh, oh, oh. Good deeds mean nothing when overshadowed by evil. The truth is everything. Call Grey Morrison the truth. Alright, so when it happened, the only two people in the enclosed cabin area were the victim and the defendant. And so help me, three whole people witnessed the man I'm trying to defend do the deed. I don't like to be pessimistic, but we do seem to be in a rather difficult situation here. Ugh, what am I supposed to think here? Is Mr. McGilder really innocent? Or could it be... Before we jump to conclusions, our first task should be to gather information. We need to understand the case much better than we do at the moment. Yes, you're absolutely right. Let's listen to those witness statements again a little more carefully this time. Chrono Trigger Story, for real? You're just guilty because you bumped into her! Okay, this is the only statement I didn't press before. Yes, I think it was sometime after Ted, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, that, that's right, sir. Yes, yeah, ever so cool, it was freezing, in fact. And you had four passengers on board at the time, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's right, sir. Not at all traveling in the same parts of the bus, of course, though, no. Okay. And there were no other passengers when the incident took place? Not one alighted, for example? You're quite right with that, sir. No other passengers like that. No, none. So nobody fled the scene of the crime, then? I have to say, the boss insists on running it, he does. Every evening, that left the boss of the day. But I, I do wonder sometimes if it's altogether worthwhile. Yes, yeah, sorry to say. 
What do you mean by that? Well, what with being so cold and everything, and only making 20 pence on the run, you see? Yes, I, I spent that much at the pub on the way home, just trying to warm up again. I, I just can't believe it, sir. Can't believe it. I'm a murder on my own b boss. It's too awful to think about. I haven't been able to shake this cold ever since it happened. Oh, mother fracking cracking. The Lord, I wish to speak. Yes, chair number five. Do I take it that you too? As the master of the London Guild of Coachman, the idea of a murder being committed in one of the city's carriages is utterly important to me. It wouldn't be right to make a decision before hearing all the facts, though, I said to myself. But I've heard enough now. The horse has bolted, as they say. No, oh, no, player. G up now, Silver Blaze. The finish is in sight. What the hell is this? Beppo is a long standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Oh, thank you, sir. You're t too kind, sir. Ugh, this is t too unkind, sir. Which now means that five jurors agree to condemn this man. Five! One, two, three, four, five. Madam juror number six. Yes, dear? What can I do for you? You have heard the testimonies of the witnesses in the stand. Oh, yes, I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know. Then, pray tell, why are you yet to pronounce your leaning? Well, dear, the thing is, I'm a creature of habit, me. I always go to the park around this time of day and sit on a nice bench to get on with my knitting. There's a lovely little park just where I live. McGilded Park, it's called. The gentleman donated it to the city, you know, to put a smile on London's face, as he said. I can't imagine that such a fine young gentleman would have had in him to take another man's life. He's always doing wonderful things for the city. That's right, a man like that would stop someone, surely. Well then, maybe go to McGilded Park to the library if they buy some more books. How many Londoners live with their heads in the clouds? Do you people not know? What kind of a man Magnus McGilded really is? What kind of a man he is he? The philanthropist Magnus McGilded. Hmm? Mm. Uncle. Yeah, I'm gonna The heck? Has enough wealth to purchase the entire city he claims to value so highly. But where did all that wealth come from? Your client is a Shylock, sir, and one with the very darkest of souls. What? Still in the crows! Mikilda lends money at extortion at the rates of interest so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When they default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've, I've never heard any mention of that before. Their faculties haven't deserted you, I'm sure, madam. So has this thought not crossed your mind? Who would a man wealthy enough to buy London in his entirety not have a carriage of his own? What possible reason could this man have had to make use of a public public omnibus service? Um... You're not saying that. Also, he's trying to, like, sway the juror. You're not allowed to do that. That's illegal. The victim, a poor brickmaker, has that do nothing to his name, save considerable financial liability. It will come as no surprise that his creditor was the accused, Magnus McGilded. But let it also be known that the very day Mr. Mason was killed was the final repayment date for, uh, date for his death. Good gracious! The brickmaker was destitute. He had lost his house. He has not a shilling to which uh, to repay his debts. And in the end, this pitiful soul had the very last thing he owned taken from him. His life! Oh, oh, oh. By the merciless philanthropist pretender, Magnus McGildad. I don't believe it. If I might add something briefly, Mr. Soto? You claim that the victim had been lent money by Mr. McGildad. But where is the evidence to support your claim? Where did you get that wine glass from? Are you gonna throw it in my, in my face? 
Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollow chalice in a court of law. Aha! There it is! Lord Van Zeek's hollow chalice! How can this be considered acceptable? But I find myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from Far East could show great courage, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. Ah, oh, as, as a judicial assistant to the defense, I am simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. This is the debtor's ledger, which details all monies loaned by the accused. You'll find the victim's names clearly recorded inside. Is this I'm gonna share? <laughs> of course not, he's just gonna throw it in my face. Oh. Allow me to present this ledger as evidence. And pray forgive the discourtesy of raising my chalice in a toasty the enigmatic east at the same time. Oh marvelous toast, Council. I would gladly accept this new evidence. The debtor's letters has been entered into the court record. Ah oh, yes, twenty guineas. The victim owed a considerable sum. Let me check this out. This portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets of Lord London's gentry. Oh dear, do you really think we ought to look inside? Yes. Well, it's not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. Actually, I wonder. I assure you we will not find Mr. Sholem's name inside. Well, let's see what we find. Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? After all, not everyone in this country is well off. Ah, goodness! What is it? Look at this, do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Should that mean something to me? It does sound familiar. Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying at this very moment. Oh, yes, of course, the banker. Why is his name in here? Ah, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course, but this could be very useful information. Oh, oh, Bruce Fairplay! You in trouble now? Is this, is this still gonna be Bruce Fairplay? Yes, it is. It's all scribbles! <laughs> nothing in the back, nothing on the cover. Okay. Well, now I have evidence! Oops. And the accused made quite certain he had ample recompense. Well, it would seem I've... I've had the wool put over my eyes. Regrettably, madam, this is the most modest operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little part, too. What a scoundrel! No! Still... Maybe it's all for the best. Ah! Wait a minute! Let's do it! I don't stand for nonsense! But the trial isn't done! Well, that's only the jury's opinion, but the judge has to lay down the last ruling. That was it. The last jury's decision. Uh, according to this encyclopedia of British law, when all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, Court proceedings are suspended, and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. Uh, the final verdict. It's over then. Oh! There's a footnote, though. A footnote? However, the defense... All six members of the jury are now in agreement in this case. Oops. Ah, I'm so frustrated. I'm just like, how do you just jump the gun and just like, well, oh, we're guilty. Then what's the point of having a trial? Just, just be like, hey, here's basically what happened. What do you think? Like, this isn't... Ugh. I want to see some cool names written in, like, Phoenix Wright. Ha 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 ha. Allow me to convey my respect for your swift and righteous decision. Oh, oh, oh. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial. By delivering my final verdict, I trust there are no objections. Mr. Sutter, just tell me one thing. Oh, yes? You were in the middle of saying something before. The footnote in your Encyclopedia of British Law. However, the defense. What did it say next? Oh, yes, of course. One moment. When all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended, blah 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 blah, then the footnote says, however, the defense. 
has the right to demand a summation examination of the jurors at this point. Oh. Uh, summation examination? What are you objecting? I have the right to do that. A summation examination. From which century has that tome you have there been resurrected? Ah. Judging from the binding, I would say that book is at least 50 years old. Any modern text on British law wouldn't even give such an antiquated procedure a mention. It's a relic, long forgotten, and certainly no longer practiced. So you're out of luck. Oh. What even is it, Mr. Sato? This so-called summation examination. Oh, um, one moment and I'll read about it. You would demand the right to a procedure before you even understand what it entails? If it gives me time, yes. Hm, typical Nipponese. Have you met J Japanese people before? What the heck? Alright, Mr. Narahoro, I think I understand. It seems that under this procedure, we would be able to appeal to the members of the jury. To do what, exactly? Appeal to them to change their leaning and reverse their decisions, and it says here that... If successful, the proceedings of the trial must be resumed. Make them reverse their decisions. Yes, in times gone by, barristers would use a summation examination to attempt to influence the jury's decision. But that procedure became something of a formality with no practical benefit, really, so rather fell out of use. I wonder why. Because it was devoid of purpose. Changing just one member of the jury's mind would be hard enough, let alone several. No self-respecting defense barrister would even assert his right to try in this day and age. But I will do it. Still... I don't see any mention of the procedure actually being formally revoked. What are you suggesting? Oh, oh, oh. I'm suggesting that although it may be antiquated and largely forgotten, it isn't yet extinct. What do you think, Mr. Narahoro? A summation examination, our last possible option. Do we assert our right to carry on or admit defeat? Uh, duh, assert our right. The defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination, my lord. Shut up! London is capital city of the most powerful nation on earth. We have a duty to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of judicial procedure. And that's why we will do this. Summation examinations are an embarrassment that should remain, but what do you have against this? Just if the jurors, if we don't change the jurors' minds, then whatever, you, you still win. Like, what harm does this cause you, dude? Why? Ugh. One moment while I look it up and see what this means while everyone else just waits. <laughs> but if it's our right, it's our right. I believe it could prove vital in this trial. The defense's petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the summation examination. This is madness. This is Sparta! Foreman, are you and the remainder of the jury ready? Wait. Well, um, I'm not, um, there was no mention of this in the letter I received, you see, so... Oh, someone's paying them to shut up! All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached their decision. On what grounds? You must all justify your decisions and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Well, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. Oh, they were all paid off! This is most irregular. No mention of was made of this before. I don't really hold with all this justifying lark. That seems to have thrown the jurors off. It seems none of them have experienced this before. Alright then, the summation examination? A defense procedure with no practicing lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for to turn this trial around. See, they were too quick and they jumped the gun on declaring their verdicts. So be it then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant, Magnus McGilda, guilty of this most serious crime. Well, we know juror number six, like she was swayed by what, um, uh, Count Chocula said. He's not the Count Chocula, he's the Count. There was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it has to have been him. I 
trust the driver. He has an excellent memory, it seems. Four passengers with fares totaling 20 pence. He stuck the chap next to him just like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. I have simply typed and collated all statements made thus far and draw the logical conclusion. You can trust the girl. Fair fares is all my own. We haven't raised prices about four pence for years. They haven't raised fares four pence, but she said four passengers, 20 pence. Something don't add up! This scoundrel stabbed that poor man on the floor. It beggars belief that he wasn't stabbed on the floor. Oh shoot! Did did Count Chocula pay them off? Because she she changed her she decided her verdict when he was like, oh, he's a he's like a lone shark or something like some kind of bad dude. And she's like, oh, he stabbed him on the floor. So you weren't listening. I'm sorry to wish I haven't pushed for this now. Some of the jurors don't seem to have wonderfully formed arguments though, do they? Well, let's see what we can do. We need to get these six people to change their minds. I'll have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive language. Just a moment, Mr. Naruhodo. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Oh? I thought I was going to have to thaw their icy minds with some heartwarming rhetoric about the defendant. Unfortunately... Once the jurors have decided the defendant is guilty, they're unlikely to heed anything the defense says. But... but then... They've reached their conclusions by their own reasoning, you see? Your pleas will sound like excuses. In fact, it could recoil on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entrenched they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Oh dear, I'm just citing what I've read about British law, Mr. Naruhodo. Right, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea of blah 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 also? Well, from what I can understand... The key to this procedure is using the jury's own words to make your arguments. What do you mean? Well, the six members of the jury all are randomly selected members of the public. They may appear to present a united front, but the truth is... They are complete strangers who just happen to find themselves here in the courtroom together. And that's the way to break them down, you mean? Yes, exactly. We must listen very carefully to what each member of the jury says. And see if we can identify any contradictory statements. Well, I already saw two, so... If we can, then we contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. I see. So it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. In a way, then. This is similar to a regular cross-examination. Oh, yes, I suppose you're right. Find the contradictions in their statement, pit the jurors against one another to break them down. All right, I may be able to pull this off. No, that's not right. I have to pull this off. I wonder what Yudosuke studied on the ship if Susato was looking up everything for him. Well, to be fair, this is, is like kind of like um an ancient relic of procedure, so might not have studied up on it. Get him, Jelly. Divide and conquer. Heck yeah, I will. Can we start proceedings, counsel? I would ask you to take the stand for this. I'm expecting a clear and concise rebuttal. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Jury. Examination. The defense has rebuttal. Four passengers with fair... I'm gonna pit you... against you... Those two statements clearly contradict each other. There you explain yourself, counsel. Me? Oh dear, what have I said? I swear on several places, main and name, I haven't the first idea what you're talking about. According to the group testimony we've heard so far, oh, he's actually walking back and forth. This is awesome. There were four passengers on the omnibus at the night in question, and according to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took twenty pence in fares. Quite right. I have those precise details typed neatly here in front of me. And juror number five also told us the following. The fare for the omnibus is always four pence. That is a fair and convenient single price. Just look at London's carriages should be operated. Just the way London's carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. In fact, it leaves a glaring discrepancy in the facts. Why, man, why? Four passengers paying four pence each. If you do the multiplication... <gasps> it, it would be 16 pence. Exactly. As I said, it doesn't add up. The figures are different. By four pence, in fact. More precisely, one person's fare. One person's fare? There was someone else in the carriage! Land pass is questionable. A court drain on a state of it. Uh, money, so yeah. What? A court drain on a state of... Uh, 
So I think I'm reading this wrong, but I can't understand it smooth. I'm sorry. Yes, in other words, on the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible there was another passenger we've heard nothing about. Good gracious! This, this can't be right. The coachman of the guild of good honest men, one and all, trustworthiness is our watchword. The figures your coachman claims most certainly do not add up. Your watchword, good sir, is a fallacy. I beg your pardon. Mr. Guildmaster, I think you ought to consider that if this trial were to end now, the news will surely spread all over London. The news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he let nefarious characters ride his omnibus. All right then, how do I make it so this miserable trial doesn't end, hmm? Well, according to my book here, you simply launch a ball of fire onto the innocent side of the set of scales. Now hold your horses there, coachman! We were all in agreement! Wait till I get my hands on you, Beppo! Oh, this is all very irritating! Begging your pardon, sir, I'm going to do the same. For the love of white, not you as well! A penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear after all. I certainly can't put my trust in someone who'd follow my exacting standards in financial matters. Oh, really? I, for one, think it's only proper that we hear from the witness again. Oh, well done, Mr. Nadahoda, you did it! We can manage to change two more jurors' minds. We can force the trial to continue. Two more, actually. There is something else that's been bothering me about a couple of their assertions. And that's where you must strike next. So I need to pit two more jurors against each other and show there's another contradiction in their assertions. Exactly. You can do it. I think it's the third guy and the last grandma. Well, the scales of justice have shifted, but they still weigh heavily on the side of guilt. Counsel, you have the floor again. Continue with your summation examination. A court kept the case going just to drain money with court fee as well as the lawyer were in on it. That is messed up. He stuck the chat next to him like this. Uh, stabbing the poor man on the floor. Okay, gonna save. Okay. We are going to pit you with him. Because their stabbing motions are different. Those two statements are com completely contradictory. Whoa! Explain, counsel. Post haste. Oh, dearie me, I, I was only knitting a jumper for my other half. I thought you were knitting mittens for your grandson, but whatever. What's all this claptrap? What does contradictory even mean, I ask you? We've heard from more than one witness that they allegedly saw the actual moment when the defendant stabbed the victim. Now, out of curiosity, juror number three. What? Can't you see that I'm busy here? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? What sort of motion was it? Huh, wanna test me, do you? It was like this! Stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. Just like the prim banker said. Yes, that was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Now then, juror number six. Oh, is that me, is it? What can I do for you, young man? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, dear, as far as, far as I understand it. It was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. The coachman said that he was on the floor? That's wrong. Now don't move. Take a look at these two jurors. He stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. Well, I never. They're... They're stabbing in totally different directions. What? Where's my stitches? What a model. What this tells us is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. Oh, but why? Why the dickens would I lie? I don't know that yet, but what I do know is that if the trial ends at this point, we may never find out. We may never know the real truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you really let that happen in all good conscience? Lies, you say? Oh, dearie me. I can't buy people telling lies. The, the scales. 
I don't believe it. Hold it. Wait! Now hear this, my fellow jurors. I warn you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in his black suit. He's, he's clearly some devious interested in sorcerer using magic on us all. He has money staked in this. If I could use magic, do you really think I'd be putting myself through all this? Answer me this, dark jinx. Huh? Me? What exactly is the problem? What if one, uh, what of it, the two witnesses have slightly different recollections of the events? What of it? Let's say, the Shylock did stab the victim as he was sat next to him on the omnibus, and this young dandy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor, and then the Shylock stabbed him again, and this old lady saw him do it. Well, what's to say it didn't happen like that? Because it's only once, right? Single stab wound, you dumb idiot. Who you calling it, Dan, sir? Why don't you take this knife to you? Who you calling it, old? Why don't you take this nail to you? Ugh, they're ready to kill each other now. But could the foreman of the jury be right? Did the two witnesses see two different moments of the same crime? It is out of the question. Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Hmm? Whatever, you dark jinx, come out, out with it. What you're suggesting is impossible. It's out of the question. <gasps> What, what are you talking about, man? How could you possibly say that? You, you do realize that I'm, a, I'm only doing my job. As a former jury, I have a re responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. So where's your evidence, man? That's what we want to see. I said the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. If you say that's out of question, show me some proof. It looks like the only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with something he can't dismiss. Some irrefutable hard evidence. As you wish. What? I'll give you the proof. It's out of the question that the two witnesses should be. Blah, 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 percent. Cadet! <laughs> wow, I've only been streaming for an hour and a half. My throat is killing me. This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, Mr. Mason was stabbed in the abdomen. Only once. Blech. Only once? It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely one time. Which means these witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. <laughs> Alright, I can see defeat. Wabam! Wait, that that means forgers are now leaning to not guilty. We've done it, Mr. Naruto. We've won! Have we though? No. Count Chocula's gonna come back and do something. What are you playing at, you damned fool? Shut your trap, sir. No one deceives me. But we had a consensus. I said shut your trap. I know a liar when I see one. And if the trap ever dares cross the threshold of my shop, I'll take this razor sharp blade and shave every last hair off his head. Ew, he's licking the blade, ew. Please tell me he's a barber. <laughs> Well, in a quite remarkable turn of events, the defense of summation examination has flipped the balance of the scales of justice. The jurors now stand at two for guilty and four for not guilty. Accordingly, there is no longer a large enough majority among the jury for me to adju adjudicate, and the trial must continue. I thank you. I thank you. I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witnesses to return to their places. And I call upon all of you to continue to pursue the truth. So, Lord Van Zeeks, continue to substantiate the case for the prosecution, if you please. Excuse me, why are you filling up your chalice? You haven't won. Oh my gosh, someone tip it into his face, please. What? Having savored the rich aroma of the carmine contents of this hollow chalice. It may seem crass to crush it to dust, but I forgive the discourtesy. Oh, oh, oh. Lord Van Zix. Is it cold in here? Or is it just me? There must be some toros in the atmosphere. As your antiquated tome no doubt says, the prosecution may not speak during a summation examination. So I honor the deathly silence and listen to the charade. 
It seems I overestimated the intelligence of the jury. Well, no matter. There is nothing so hard to prove as self-evident truth, it would seem. No, and why else would we grace the courtroom with our presence after all? So, let us proceed to the next round of battle. Whoa, the cape came off. He's serious now. Bring forth the witnesses once more. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Fairbanks, I know you guilty. Witnesses. I trust you heard the summation examination we have just had to endure. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, that, that I did, sir. Of course I heard. Oh, yes, yeah, sir, I, I heard it. You, sir, on the end. The coachman. I believe it's Beppo. Yes, yeah, sir, my lord, sir. If it transpires that in your previous entry, you were attempting to veil the presence of a fifth passenger on your omnibus, you will be found guilty of perjury. You are advised to bear that in mind, sir. Oh, me oh deal. Oh. oh, he's Italian. Oh my gosh. I gave him a British accent, I did. Now then, witnesses, I hereby call upon you to testify before the court again. You will explain the various misgivings brought to our attention by the defense's summation examination. Updated testimony. I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it. Well, I for one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. He fiddled us on the fare, he did, and then I saw that broke curtain's shot as well. It's all too much. I tell you, I saw Bagilda stabbing that man. Everything I said before stands. Oh, yes, yes, he is stabbed, and yes, he did. I, I think so, yes. Counsel, make sense of this for me, please. The Phantom Fifth Passenger conjured into existence by my learned Eastern friend never existed. The confusion has arisen from the coachman's slight little co cousinage? Cousinage? Uh. Peppo, explain yourself! I'm terribly sorry, he killed the bastard. The girl's fare is four pence across the board, you know that. Am I to understand that you've been overcharging our passengers by a penny affair? It, it's so cold, and the last run of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, Coachman. Uh, I'm sorry. You're a disgrace, Beppo, a disgrace! And your selfish actions have brought dishonor on the entire guild. If I may, sir, I had to pay ten pence on the bus just last week. What? Four passengers at five pence each is, yes, twenty pence. I've done the arithmetic ten times already, but I just can't make the result come out differently. No, that figures. Ha 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 ha. Well, it appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination if you please. We already had the pleasure of a protracted summation examination today. I see you intend to continue the pilot games. Absolutely. I'm going to crush your butt into the dirt. Okay. Oh, oh. I'm gonna have to press every statement. Yeah, just, just... So there were only four passengers on your carriage, but you didn't charge them the standard four pence fare. Is that right? It, it, it's impossible to make the last one of the day pay. I was so c c cold, it was all I could do to stop myself passing out. I'm getting chill blains just listening to you. What the heck are chill blains? It was t terrible, so I wanted to give myself a pat on the back for even keeping the bus running. Doesn't that the dedicated coachman that they deserve an extra penny per passenger? Okay. You're digging a deeper hole for yourself here. If only there had been a fifth passenger on the omnibus that night, then we would have another special. Bet. Blah blah blah. blah. Does that mean everyone on board that night paid five pence instead of four? Well, I paid five pence too, sir. I just told you that I did. Oh, not fair! Five pence across the board! 
That's not something to be proud of. The so-called discrepancy my learned friend identified was nothing of the sort. Much like the phantom killer you so desperately needed is gone. Dead and buried. I'd have been happy if it had never exist if it had ever existed in the first place. Saw that burrow clearing site as well, it's all too much. This blood curling site, you mean the murder, I presume? Yes, yeah, sure. Hello, I'm sorry. No one should have had to witness the horror in the eyes of a man the moment his life was taken. Oh, well, not exactly, sir. I mean, I didn't actually see the exact moment the jet was stabbed. Good gracious, really? We have another witness who did, however. The banker has already testified to it. Hmm, but Mr. First didn't actually see the point at which the victim was killed. That may turn out to be very significant. I heard the banker jet next to me take a sharp intake of breath, see? That's when I looked up through the grass. That, that's when I saw that horrible blade poking out from his belly, all covered in blood. Every time I see a knife now, I can't help screaming, even when I'm eating. Blah, 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 blah. So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGilda, stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him? That, that's what I said, is it? It was bothering me before this was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyway, there was only two of them inside the carriage, was there? There's been much talk of fifth passenger, but as yet, zero evidence. Zero. Uh, uh, uh. The world we wasted all this time for, eh? It's black and white. The man's guilty. Something about Mr. Fairplay says me just jars with me. I wish I could work out what it was. But I think if I present the ledger to him, it's just gonna be like, what is this supposed to mean to me? Oh yes, yeah, she stabbed him. Yes, yeah, she did. I think so, yes. Earlier you testified that you saw the moment when the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Oh yes, yes, that's right. You said the victim was on the floor and described the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I, I suppose I might have, you know, yes, I put the cart before the horse, maybe. What's this? Well, I'm quite sure about most of it. I was driving the horses when I heard a scream from, from the seats on the roof deck. Oh, I expect that was me, sir. Then when I turned around, y yes, yes, I saw it through the skylight. The gentleman was on the floor and the knife was sticking out of the midriff. That's right, yes, and the fellow holding the handle was a famous man, yes. So in short, you didn't see the moment when the victim was actually stabbed at all. I I really thought that I did, but... But when I go over it again in my head... No, I suppose I... Whoa! Ooh, 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 save, 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 save. Nandato! Uh, pursue! Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Fairplay? Now you listen to me! I know what you're thinking! He didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed, what a chance of that! Eh? Are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. I might be able to extract some new information from him if I answer him cleverly. Could he have just happened to see the exact moment the crime was committed? What did he say, Nantato? Um, cause I was like, yo, you seem shady. Uh, no chance. Well, it's a little hard to believe, certainly. Unless you spend your time peeping through a skylight on top of an omnibus, that is. Peeping? I'm, I'm a respectable city banker, I hope you know. And I know what I saw. I remember it as clear as a Ballarat day. That's a grim scene, I don't mind telling you. Thank you, Mr. Fairplay. Oh, oh, excuse me if I was getting a little hot on the collar there, my lord. I would ask you to supp supplement your testimony with a clear statement about what exactly you saw. It, oh, I can do that all right. I'll tell you just how grim it was. Do you think I'd forget the sight of those blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed a man? But wasn't he wearing gloves? Well, let's press. Blood soaks. <clears throat> well, perhaps soap is laying it on a little thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. And you saw that from the roof? Through the skylight? 
Well, the skylight's supposed to be large, so I had a pretty good view. And there was a lamp on the inside of the carriage as well, so I'm quite sure of what I saw. Hmm, that's Banker's latest statement. I feel there's something- Oh, what? Whatever, something's weird about it. Yeah, but he said in Japanese. Oh, yeah. Um, it's because I have all the voices in Japanese, so even um, Van Zeeks is going to speak in Japanese. When you feel something doesn't add up, Mr. Naruhodo, that's when you should have a good look through the court record. But now, do I give the photo or do I give the blood, the gloves? Not long ago, this trial very nearly came to an end. Somehow we've managed to keep our chances alive here. Can't waste this cross-examination after you bring some new facts to light. Hmm, if you're not careful when you press these witnesses... The danger is the jury will end up believing something unhelpful as they did before. Maybe, but we can't let the fear of that happening stop us from uncovering important new information. Yes, you're so right. I need to pay careful attention here. I don't want to miss even a flicker of a reaction among these witnesses. Remember, if you happen to spot one of the witnesses reacting in a strange way, don't hesitate to pursue as the as to the reason. I already did, and I already got a statement. No! Oh, I didn't mean to! No, I didn't mean to! Ah! Yes, 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 I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push that! I just thought I saw, like, another diamond come up, so I was like, push right, but nope, that was it. Okay. Blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed the man, and he said, in his clarification, they were both soaked in blood. So the question is, is the gloves the right thing to give, or the... Um, the picture? Since he's talking about hands, I will present this. And I'm right, the music stopped. Blood-soaked hands? Well, I meant that soap may be laid at all thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. Well, I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay, but that's more than a little peculiar. What? Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilded, on the night in question. Oh, yes, right. And there certainly does appear to be a sizable dark-colored stain there. But, as I'm sure you can clearly see... It's only... Uh, what? It's only on the right-hand glove. Arr. In short, Mr. Fairplay, your testimony is inconsistent. Yeah, But, but, no, th that can't be right. So you're the lie here, then. Arr. That's right, you were quite clear about it. You said here, it was both hands. Arr. I gave him a western accent, whoops. Mr. Fairplay, if your last statement was a lie, it calls your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? Oh, I will. I. Why is he nibbling on it like a rabbit? It was a simple mistake. You can't justify accusing this man of lying. Yes, it was on both hands. It was only one. But the fact remains. The victim's blood was on the accused. No, Mr. Fairplay categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands, which means there's a strong possibility that this witness was deliberately trying to mislead the court. Gah! Why, why? I'm a sitting banker for pity's sake. My word should be gold standard. I'm a gentleman, not some gutter snipe. Upstanding members of society don't prevaricate. He's claiming to have no reason to lie, but is that really the case? No. Mr. Naruhodo, if we had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairplay might be lying, it could be turned a tie to this trial completely. Something to show this man has compelling reason to lie. I have evidence! My lord. Yes, counsel? The defense is ready to present evidence. By Jove, are you sure? Yes, evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay had the reason to lie in his testimony. Gah! Very well. I hereby call on the defense to present its evidence. The evidence that demonstrates a motive for the witnesses the deception of the court. This is the list of debtors who owe money to Mr. McGilded. Yes, a list of innocent victims crippled by the accuser's extortion. 
The point is, among the names in this debtors is your name, Mr. Bruce Fairplay. What? Mr. Fairplay, are you currently indebted financially to the accused? Oh, uh, no, well, it's it's barely worth being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Ah, uh, well, what of it? Let's suppose Mr. McGilded were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your debt in that case? Hmm, these documents state that the loan agreement is forged between two individual parties. Therefore, were the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to capital punishment, all outstanding debts which were owed to him would be annulled. They would cease to exist. Cease to exist? Mr. Fairplay, is it not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw? In a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant. Order! Order! I don't want Mr. Bruce Fairplay. Yes, my lord. Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have most serious implications upon your future, sir. Uh, did you or did you not see the precise moment in time at which the defendant is alleged to have thrust a knife into the victim? Die already. Your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. Alright, now let's not make a melodrama of this. Perhaps I did overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch? But it makes no difference. I definitely remember seeing blood on Mr. McGilded's hands, both of them. And yet, only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. Ugh, so you keep saying. Wait, I never examined the gloves. Shoot. This is definitely blood, isn't it? Not the most pleasant sight to be confronted with on our first day in London. Well, nothing will come of grumbling now. No, by the way, Mr. McGilder is right-handed. Yes, I believe so. He was toying with a coin in his right hand a little earlier. Ugh, pity. If only he'd been left-handed. I think blood on either glove would be fairly incriminating, really. Just gotta double check. Is there anything on the inside? No, it doesn't appear. Okay, I just had to double check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I- I wonder if I might be allowed to speak, sir. Go ahead, Mr. First. Well, the thing is, I- I think I remember seeing it myself as it happens. See what? The blood, sir, on the assailant's hands. I think. Yes. I'm- I'm almost sure it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? Then how is there blood on only one side of the glove? Hmm, it would appear that we're going to need further testimony from all your witnesses. This time, I would like to precisely know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Yarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on the seat, corroborating the witness's accounts. In other words, there is no substantial, no significant change in the facts of the case. Hmm. Very well, your cross-examination please, counsel. Yes, my lord! I can't do it, I can't- oh, my, my door hurts. Oh, I gotta stop, I gotta stop for tonight. Even though this is like really exciting and just like, whoa, this is crazy! Because I have no idea like where the direction of this case is going. But I just have to stop, my throat is killing me. Ah. It is fun doing voices even though I didn't stream, I did voices too, need lots of drink. I know, yeah, it's really fun to do the voices. There's just so many characters and like it's just me by myself, so I'm just like... <gasps> so. Mind you, that blood looks delicious. Haha, <laughs> ew, it does not. Okay, so I'm gonna have to stop this here. Um, yeah, I'll come back on Tuesday. Oh, saying Dracula said, oh yeah, because he drinks the wine and he's he's a vampire. Ha 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 ha. Objection night. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'll be back on Tuesday to finish up this case and see where it takes us. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Hugs. Thank you for the hugs. Anyways, have a good weekend, guys. Bye bye.